Hi everyone, I'm Eran Stern and this is the first of three part tutorial on my 3D watch animation. Yes, you heard it right. Three parts is a lot, but I'm telling you, it's worth the money. Oh, this video is for free. Mm. Anyway, there is a lot to show you. So first, let's look at the results of what we will recreate here. We will recreate this hand watch in Photoshop CS3 Extended and we will animate it in part 2 and 3 in After Effects. You can of course read the title for Rolex and the Hebrew letters, the Hebrew words actually, is uh, Eternal Watches. Something like this. Anyway, if you like me, you probably cannot afford to buy a Rolex watch. So this is for you guys. We will recreate it using After Effects and Photoshop. How clever! So let's stop the ramp preview and come back to the full interface. For this part, you will need to use Adobe Photoshop CS3 Extended. If you don't have this version, you won't be able to follow, but you can still use the rasterize file, which I included for you with the project files. Before we will start our design, I want to switch to my web browser for a moment and point you to the Adobe Labs site. The address is labs.adobe.com and over there let's go to the download section. In the download section, if you didn't already do it, you will find an Adobe Photoshop CS3 extended plugin for Google 3D Warehouse. Wow. That was a long name. Anyway, double click on this file and follow the instruction. Download it, of course. It's free of charge and you should be able to install it very easily on your Photoshop CS3 extended plugins folder. Okay, we are ready. Now let's go into Photoshop and we will go into the automate menu and choose search Google for 3D model couple of seconds, the 3D Warehouse plugin should come up. And now you can search for 3D models in order to use with Photoshop. Now I have to tell you, these images are royalty free, non-exclusive, and they can be used and changed by you. But for more details, please read the Google agreement in their website. Anyway, we will do a search for Rolex. And let's see the results. Well, the first one is really what we will need. This Rolex Oyster watch that was designed originally by a person called Sizer, which sounds to me a little bit like Siler from Heroes. And if you know Heroes, then you probably know that Siler can hear how clocks are thinking. So maybe there is some connection. Okay, anyway. Let's get to the business. You can either download or just press get model. Then you will be able to go to file open and open the file inside Photoshop. So let's press open. And this is a little bit of a change file from what Sizer has done for us. I deliberately took out the handles and you will see why in the next part of our tutorial. Now, after Photoshop finished to process it, you will get a dialog. In this case, it will ask you what you want the image size to be. Well, the default values are absolutely fine and you can leave it like this. 1024 by 1024 pixels for width and height. Now, Photoshop again will read the file and after a couple of seconds, you should get something similar to what you see on screen. Now, this is a very interesting file because since Photoshop CS3 extended, we have the ability to take this file and actually look at it from all the dimension. That's right, this file is three dimensional. So take a look at the layers panel and you will see the little square icon. Double click on this little square icon and you will get inside the 3D environment of Photoshop. Now this environment is completely new to version CS3. For example, this tool will allow you like 
After Effects camera to orbit around your object. So now we can see this watch from behind and we can see all of the cogwheels and stuff like this. So I want to cancel out of this menu for one second because we need to understand something about the new interface, the new 3D interface. Once you double click it, if you do any change, you must cancel or confirm. If you forget to do it, then Photoshop will not allow you to continue to work which is like a little 3D software inside Photoshop. And I want to show you something very interesting. There is this menu here which controls light settings and appearance settings and you can choose from a list of presets which allow you to change the light settings of the original image. For example, this is light from file and this is white lights and the, let's uh, try cube lights for example and CAD optimized lights, which is for my money the best settings of all. So I will confirm these settings. And now inside Photoshop, we will grab the icon of the layer and duplicate it and generate another copy. Now we will change this copy. So let's first of all hide the one below and again double click the little cube in order to get to the 3D environment. And once we are there, let's change now the appearance settings. Instead of default, which is the default of course, you can try and play with a couple of them and choose something that will suit your need. There is vertices, shaded wireframe, wireframe and a couple of others. We will start with wireframe. Now this wireframe looks good but we cannot really see it so let's change the color to black. And you know what? We will try even a better mode. Let's switch to shaded wireframe. Wow! This is an excellent look for my taste. I think we will stay with it. Let's accept it. And look at the details. Look how the fine lines and all the little wheels are showing through. Let's even try to zoom in a little bit better and see. Very, very nice. I think that uh, this Stazer did an excellent work for us. So thank you very much for sharing. Anyway, we will rename this to wireframe. And now we will return to this 3D environment and prepare some more layers. So I will grab this wireframe layer and I will duplicate it once again. So I have another copy right now. Let's shut up the eye and double click on the cube icon in order to once again go inside the appearance setting and let's choose now something else let's choose line illustration wow it's blocking everything it's because the line colors are still black we need to change the color so let's choose a different color i will choose somewhere around the orange colors doesn't really matter which orange and I think that this one looks much better. So we will accept it and we will rename it to Shaded Illustration. Now we have to prepare another copy. So we will drag it again and duplicate it and double click on the layer. Coming back into the 3D environment of Photoshop and we will choose a different appearance settings. We will try Shaded Illustration. Mm, yes, I think that we will accept this one and maybe change the color to something around the brown ones. Well, I didn't get the naming part to exactly match the appearance setting. So we'll just name the last layer shaded. And for the last part of this section, we will just reorganize our layers. I will drag the original Rolex layer on top of everybody and we will rename it render or maybe even better full render and let's switch the eyeball for one moment and okay the second layer will be the shaded one it's okay the third one will be the illustration so we can just leave the name illustration excellent and the last one will be our wireframe so wireframe illustration shaded and full render 
Before signing up this part, I want to prepare some background element, something that we will use in our After Effects design later. So let's grab the wireframe layer, just solo it for one second and duplicate it. We will reorder the layers and just name the last copy back. So this will be our background and double click it in order to get once again into the 3D environment. Now we will orbit around it or rotate it in 3D. Let's find something interesting, some nice angle to look. And I think that this should do it. Okay, maybe we will scale it a little bit. So we will just press on the scale button and just slowly zoom inside. Now we can move it a little bit to the top. And these tools are quite similar to the camera tools in After Effects. So you can probably get used to them very easily. Now I think that this is a good place for it. So I will approve this uh, change. And now we have a back layer. And on top of this, we have the rest of the layers, which we will animate in the second and third part of this tutorial. So now we're going to save this as a PSD file. And that's it. You're done. This concludes the first part of the 3D watch animation. In the next part, we will animate the hand watch in After Effects and create some more interesting stuff. Until then, this is Elran Stern saying goodbye.